It's been a complicated last few years for superhero movies. Marvel have been very hit or miss for about half a decade now, and DC have just recently released their sixth bad movie in a row. And yet despite that, I've been able to stay cautiously optimistic for them. I mean, Marvel still release a decent amount of good stuff, and even DC's disappointing capers usually have some redeeming aspects. But not only that, they're also competing with a company that shows just how bad things could be. Sony's symbiotic, or parasitic, relationship with the MCU has resulted in some of the most derivative and incompetent superhero movies ever made, which are embarrassing for the time period they came out in. And yet, despite that, they keep greenlighting more, which means that something about this franchise must be working for them. In this case, the Venom movies. And to be fair, compared to Sony's other recent superhero movies, the first two Venom films are also terrible. Spider-Man 3 is the best Venom movie, fight me. I mean, I get why this is the character Sony found some success with. There is slightly more of a creative spark than their other work, and Leather Be Carnage had its moments, but they're still wildly below the standard set by the other studios they're either competing with or piggybacking off of. So when the release of Venom The Last Dance was on the horizon, I didn't have particularly high hopes. But Venom 2 was a big improvement over the first, so I figured even if the movie wasn't good, there might be at least some enjoyable aspects. No! The movie was awful. I went in with very low expectations, just an underdeveloped story with paper-thin characters, but also a few laughs to keep it at least watchable, and the movie failed to live up to even that. The movie barely even has a plot. The film is only an hour and 49 minutes, which is pretty short for a superhero movie nowadays, and even then you can feel the movie struggling to fill up that not very ambitious runtime. The main story begins with Eddie Brock and Venom in Mexico on the run from the law after the events of the second film and discovering that a villain named Null has sent a creature called a Xenophage after them. And almost nothing Eddie and Venom do throughout most of the movie helps to progress that. For example, the movie opens with a sequence of them killing these bad guys who are running an illegal dogfighting ring. This ends up having zero bearing on the plot, and I have no idea why it's even here. Most of the story involves Eddie on his way back to America so he can clear his name, but this isn't really explored in any satisfying way either, because the movie doesn't show us what Eddie's life is like while on the run or make us root for him to get his life back. We never see anything like Eddie hiding or sneaking around in any way or living in poor conditions that would make the audience sympathize, and he barely interacts with any other characters for most of the movie outside of Venom. He spends half the movie wandering around this empty desert which obviously isn't that dangerous or interesting of an environment, and when he is in public there isn't much in the way of him finding clever ways to blend in or avoid drawing attention to himself. Even the main threat of the movie that is actively hunting them doesn't pose much of a danger. Okay, so there's this thing that Eddie and Venom apparently have in their bodies or whatever called the Codex, and the Xenophage is trying to get them because it will somehow make Null come back from the something or other that he was sealed away in. Look, I'm only going off what the movie told me, I'm doing my best here. The thing is though, the Codex is only detectable when Venom is fully unleashed, which means that Venom has limited use of his powers for most of the movie, and the creatures coming after them usually has no means of actually tracking them. In other words, both the hero and villain of the story end up being wildly unimpressive for most of the movie. Oh yeah, and while we're on the subject, the villain sucks too. I knew basically nothing about Null before watching this movie, and after watching I legitimately do not feel like that's changed. He shows up for 20 seconds at the beginning and 20 seconds at the end. For a main villain, he has a baffling lack of presence in the story. To be fair, it seems like Sony are trying to set Null up to be their Thanos, the villain who gets teased every few movies with the notion that he's going to pose this big threat later on. And that would be fine if the villain we currently have had anything interesting or unique about it, but the Xenophage is basically just every other animalistic alien threat that you've seen in dozens of movies. Aside from that, there's a few other characters that don't get enough development. There's a scientist named Dr. Teddy Payne whose brother was killed in a lightning strike, and this backstory never becomes relevant to the story. There's Commander Rex Strickland who goes through this arc of trying to track down and kill Eddie because he sees him as a threat, but then teams up with him near the end of the film. And his entire character development just involves him completely turning on a dime. He goes from being willing to illegally murder Eddie to trusting him after Eddie does one nice thing by saving some people. 
There's a family of hippies that Eddie hitchhikes with, and they basically contribute nothing to the story. They're supposed to have Eddie reflect on the idea of having a family and loved ones, but nothing comes of this. On top of all that, I can't help but feel like Eddie and Venom's banter that this franchise has been coasting on since its inception is starting to lose its novelty. It's just slightly different variations of the same joke over and over. Venom either suggests or does something stupid or dangerous, and then Eddie just seems mildly fed up only for him to reluctantly go along with it anyway. Their interactions don't get much more meaningful than that. In fact, there's a point in the movie where Eddie is reflecting back on his time with Venom, complete with clips from the previous two movies. It's meant to be a touching scene, but barely any of those moments that get shown in the flashback appear to be happy memories. It's mostly just scenes of Eddie being terrified of Venom or the two of them bickering. This is the worst Venom movie. In fact, even as someone who really didn't like the first two movies and didn't expect to like this one, I'm disappointed. It's been a while since watching the previous movies, but I seem to remember the first movie at least having more of a plot and the second movie being an occasionally decent buddy comedy. As for Venom 3 though, this is on the level of Morbius and Madam Web. Yes, I do think it's that bad. And at this point, I'm really struggling to see how Sony's franchise is going to continue after this. Sony have indicated that Venom 3 is going to be, well, the last dance for these characters. And considering that Venom was the only hero keeping this series financially viable and retaining a bit of a fan base, what do we have to fall back on now? Craven the Hunter? The Sinister Six movie that Morbius teased? Hypno Hustler? Intriguing. Well, it's up to Sony to figure that one out, and who knows, maybe they will. But in the meantime, I'd say just save yourself the trouble and watch No Way Home again. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters, Heather Reed and Zelda. Thank you so much for the support.